Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education. May I have a motion to go into closed session? Motion to move to closed session. As permitted by Section 3-305 of the General Provisions Article of the Annotated Code of Maryland, I move that we go into closed session to discuss personnel, HR report, additional items, I'm sorry, administrative items to include transportation report, confirmation of appeal dates and times, the minutes from August 2nd, future meeting events, in September, um, September 20th, we have a work session scheduled for 11 and an appeal session scheduled for 3. And October 6th, a board meeting beginning at 4.30, closed session, 6 o'clock open. Thank you, Sharon. All in favor, say aye. Uh, uh, aye. I second her motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, we have to second. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, um, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. We will return at 6 p.m. Welcome to the Board of Education meeting. This is a public meeting that is being videotaped for, taped for county citizens to review on QAC TV, a local cable station. The agenda is available on the information table inside the door. During this meeting, we ask that you turn off your cell phones and hold personal conversations outside of the meeting room. We will now be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by our student board members. Sarah Schauber and um, Grace Park. Grace Park, <laughs> thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are going to move to 2.01, which is the approval of the agenda. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. A second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The approval of the minutes for open and closed session on August 2nd. May I have a motion to approve the minutes from August 2nd? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Kane so that she can lead us through the recognition. Good evening. And so our first recognition will be offered by Ms. Janet Pauls. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we can. Ms. Pauls can come on now. Yep, we'll come on down, but Ms. Pauls will come up. She's going to she's going to introduce the first one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it is my. Come on, get it right. <laughs> it is my pleasure this evening to introduce Ms. Barbara Thurber, and to recognize her for her dedication to Queen Anne's County Schools. Ms. Thurber, please come forward. So in November, we lost a supervisor in curriculum and instruction. And Barb stepped in to assist with the duties to ensure the elementary program continued to operate without any interruption in services. And if you know curriculum and instruction, we're already wearing many, many hats. And so Barb really acclimated to the job very quickly. With her assistance, we would have not been able to maintain the integrity of the program. Mrs. Thurber assisted the CNI department by facilitating reading specialist meetings, writing and monitoring grants, 
attending state briefings, compiling data, organizing pre-kindergarten and kindergarten registration, facilitating progress report meetings with parents and teachers, and facilitating pre-K teacher meetings. Ms. Thurber, being able to count on you for your additional support and leadership was greatly appreciated and greatly impacted our elementary school program. You are truly a standout person because of your dedication to the students and staff of Queen Anne's County. We thank you. So our next recognition, our next recognition is for Miss Jacqueline Toomey. Jacqueline Toomey is a teacher specialist at Stevensville Middle School. She has been such an integral part of the leadership transition at uh, Stevensville Middle School. Her new principal, Ms. Tara Downs, has nominated her to be recognized today. So you know where your nomination is coming from. Come join us, Ms. Downs. Oh, you come join us over here. We'll make sure you get a picture. <laughs> Her personal and professional knowledge of building administration from new schedules to faculty meetings provided the leadership team with a valuable source of information that has ultimately led to a smooth transition for Ms. Toomey, uh, for Ms. Downs. Ms. Toomey presented her professional knowledge of the school improvement team process at the June administrator and supervisor meeting. Her input and guidance at the building level of SIT meetings at school improvement team meetings were paramount in providing a good foundation for establishing goals for this coming school year. Thank you so much for your leadership and ability to provide for everyone at Stevensville Middle School from teachers, students, and for your new administration. Thank you so much. Our next recognition is for Marlo Kopich and, or if I'm saying that incorrectly, Coppage and Matt Cardi. So tonight we recognize two Queen Anne's County High School teachers, Mrs. Marlo Coppage and Mr. Matthew Cardi. And we extend recognition to Kent County High School teacher, Mr. Philip Seigen. Would Miss, well, you're both up here now, so thank you for coming up here. Um, they helped to transform 29 rising ninth graders uh, with their, about their attitude and their ability to learn, persevere, and problem solve at this summer's Summer Youth Development and Leader Academy, Leadership Academy, a pilot partnering for youth for after school uh, programs for Queen Anne's and Kent County Schools. And I can say that I personally had an opportunity to visit uh, with Mr. P and it was a very, very uh, well attended, well run, and outstanding program for our students. And I can't imagine us not ever having that again. So we'll continue to do what we can do. It was a wonderful program and a great experience for our students. Um, they signed up to spend long summer days to build important relationships with their future students while creating a rigorous academic learning environment, and that they did. Whether they were delivering an engaging math lesson, kayaking the river, climbing a ropes course, building a buoy, coding a robot, or playing synaptic tag. They skillfully succeeded in creating lasting bonds that will remain with students throughout their high school experience. Because of Mrs. Coppage and Mr. Cardi, almost every student said they were motivated to learn math 
as a result of the Academic Youth Development Summer Program. We recognize Marlo and Matt for their commitment to the success of their students, and we know that students will fondly remember the summer they spent with you and can't wait to see how your positive influence will impact the future success of your students. So thank you. One more, one, two, three. And I'm going to indulge you for just one moment, okay. if you all don't mind. And I'm going to recognize uh, our math supervisor, Rob. Please come on, Watkins, and, and let's recognize. <laughs> Come on up. We want to recognize everybody involved with the program. And Ms. Hoop. And Ms. Hoop. Where is she? Ah, there she is. Come on up. Come on up. Yes, that's right. It, it takes a village, right? It's a big picture. Absolutely. All right. All right. One, two, three. Last one. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. Our next recognition, Linda Gent. Gent. Linda Gent. Come forward, please. <laughs> Ms. Linda Gent is a reading specialist at Centerville Elementary School, and she's dedicated so much time this summer to help ensure that the students at Centerville Elementary School had a school year that was prepared, well prepared for them. Um, uh, Ms. Gent or, and Ms. Farnell has been able to nominate you, first of all. She's been so fortunate to have you this summer, and she says that you have been a huge help in planning, interviewing, on top of earning your master's degree, and working towards the Early Education um, MSDE Teacher Symposium. So we thank you for the time that you've spent. She gives 110% every day to make sure that staff and students are prepared and have what they need to be successful. Her dedication and knowledge is an invaluable resource to Centerville Elementary School and the community. So we thank Ms. Gent for helping to ensure that Centerville Elementary School is going to have a successful school year, and we look forward to another successful school year with your hard work, dedication, and your leadership. Thank you. And our next recognition uh, tonight, this special recognition, we'd like to express our appreciation and thanks for the efforts of our talented students and staff. Summer is a time to recharge and relax, but it is also a time for preparation and continued education for so many of our staff and our students. So our special recognition is for Teresa Blanco and Giselle Torres. So we'd like to recognize these two Sudlersville Middle School students for their hard work and time spent at Sudlersville Elementary School. Uh, Ms. Teresa and Giselle reached out to Mrs. Susan Walbert asking if they could volunteer their time with the Summer Migrant Program. So they asked to do this work, so good for you. After Mrs. Wolbert described the work that they'd be doing, they both responded with awesome, and when can we start? Outstanding. They work every single day of the program creating bulletin boards, engaging with one and two year old students, and reading with students. By the end of the program, students were begging to have Teresa and Giselle in their classroom. 
Mrs. Wolbert looks forward to having them become a part of the program next school year or next summer. After the program ended, Teresa and Giselle helped Ms. Mrs. Mr. Walls stamping textbooks and organizing classroom materials. Mr. Walls and Mrs. Walbert cannot thank them enough for their dedication and hard work at Sudlersville Elementary School with the Migrant Program. So we thank you both for being such great role models for Queen Anne's County Public Schools, and we are so very, very happy and looking forward to having you both back on next summer. So congratulations. <laughs> Special presentation. Is there anyone else that is a parent? Yeah. Okay, and Mr. Kenna, come forward, please. And, and we'd like nice to, to see if Walls. we have parents uh, here. Yes, by all means. We've got to recognize parents. And, Maria. Yep, and Maria. Maria. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We all set? One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. At this time, we will move to 4.01, which is the board member, including legislative update from me. We haven't had any uh, meetings yet. Oh, our I first was just meeting is, say, is we September eighteenth. September eighteenth is our okay. first one. We will move on to four point two zero, Superintendent King. So a good evening once again. I am happy to report that myself and, and uh, my team, we have lots and lots of wonderful things to share about our experiences out in the community over the past several weeks and our work with our uh, employees. So I'll start with about two weeks ago, we had our Leadership Institute and we were able to go to Prospect Bay and enjoy some time and fellowship there and to have an opportunity to engage in some professional development we worked with Centerville Police Department, we worked with MSDE, we worked with each other, uh, we got some updates on some upcoming um, guidelines for employees, we had lots and lots of information from our curriculum and instruction staff, just getting us prepared for the school year. Mr. Peel will share more information about some other professional development that was offered. But it was a great time to get to know one another, we had all of our principals, we had all of our assistant principals, and all of our teacher specialists with us on those three days and we really really were able to dig into some of the material that we needed to get prepared for the school year and I can truly say that it paid off uh, the week after that we did our new teacher orientation our new teacher Institute led by Miss Pauls and and she had several other ladies on her team that worked with her mr. P I might imagine might say something about that as well so we welcomed 40 new uh, teachers and it was a wonderful experience they had an opportunity to ask questions, to engage with uh, curriculum and instruction staff, and really get to understand what's going to be expected of them as they enter the classroom. We also, the week after that, engaged in professional development with teachers. And I can tell you that all of the preparations that happened, and, and even a few weeks prior to that, we worked with, we met with our bus drivers. And we had an opportunity to have lunch with our bus drivers and get to know each and every one of them. So it has 
just been a really, really wonderful uh, past three or four weeks. And all of that paid off as we opened school on yesterday. And I can tell you, it was a model school opening. We, Mr. P, P myself, my executive team, we've all been out in schools and, and had an opportunity to ride the bus. So that's a tradition here in Queen Anne's County. And I enjoyed every second of it. Uh, I had an opportunity to ride Barbara Wallace's bus at the Sudlersville area. And we went to all of the communities and we were able to say hello to parents and grandparents and, and welcome our students on the bus for the first day of school. I think we were more excited than they were. Uh, <laughs> but it was a wonderful, wonderful first day. So we have had an opportunity to visit all 14 schools. We have our 15th school visit that we'll do on tomorrow. And otherwise, the buildings were spotless. Thank you, Mr. Pender, and all of our custodial staff. Lunches were served, so all of our Sodexo staff. Uh, teachers were prepared, uh, instructional assistants, administrators, all of our specialists. Everyone was prepared, had an opportunity to talk with parents, grandparents. It was just a wonderful school opening. So I say thank you to all of our community, all of our support staff, everyone who made it possible for us to have an outstanding two days, of first two days of school. And then, of course, on tomorrow, we welcome our youngest ones. So our pre-K and our kindergarten students will welcome them for their first day on tomorrow. And we just had an outstanding opening of school this year. So that's my report. And I'll stop because I can go on and on. <laughs> Well, it sounds like you've had a fun It uh, has been days. wonderful. It <laughs> has. Absolutely wonderful. And so we'll go to Mr. P. Sure. Uh, good evening, members of the Board of Education. I just wanted to uh, update you on a, on a few things that I've had the opportunity to participate, many of the things that Dr. Kane uh, had mentioned. Uh, but I also wanted to iterate that uh, we also had two superintendent meet and greets. Uh, hard to believe that was uh, August 14th and I believe the 21st, 21st. Uh, 21st at uh, Sudlersville uh, Middle School as well as Stevensville Middle School. Both of those were well attended and I know everybody was anxious to engage with an opportunity to meet Dr. Kane and those were very, very positive things. I also had the opportunity to uh, attend with Dr. Kane on uh, August 23rd, the second town hall meeting that took place at uh, Mattapique Elementary School for the families and the community impacted uh, by the tornado. Uh, we were there. Uh, Mr. Angle was there as well. He actually spoke. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we reached out to the community uh, so they know uh, that we're here for them to make sure that any issues that they had, uh, any of their children had that were there to prepare, whether that was school counseling or any other issue. Uh, so we haven't heard of any reports, uh, although we've had some uh, materials that we're, we've donated that we'll be getting out to schools shortly. Uh, but that was a great uh, community event as well. I will say one of my highlights uh, last week with all the things that are going on, I was invited uh, by Michelle Carey, uh, the principal at Kennard Elementary School, uh, that in the morning uh, they took a school bus uh, and I'll give a shout out um, to the whole entire community uh, of uh, Kennard that they toured the communities in which they serve their students. And I will tell you one of the highlights of that uh, field trip, uh, so-called, uh, was watching the parents or the children out in front of their homes welcoming teachers, their teachers, back to school. Uh, I had never experienced it like that. Michelle, Miss Carey uh, communicated that to her community that they were going to be out uh, the next day. Uh, it was just a, a wonderful, I want to give a shout out uh, to Mr. Hanzo, uh, who actually drove the bus, one of our, our skilled bus drivers, our LLCs, uh, and his support to that. It was just a, a wonderful way for teachers to really feel welcome in, in their community. The last thing, uh, Dr. Kane and myself, uh, many of us, Ms. Pauls, uh, attended the Queen Anne's County High School football game uh, on Friday night with my wife as well. And uh, I know that they had won. That. That's always a, a great community event to be a part of as well. Uh, so I reiterate Dr. Kane's comments. We're off to an outstanding start. Thank you, Mr. Pilewski. We will now move on to the student board members. Um, Grace, would you like to 
share your experience abroad this summer with us? Oh, sure. <laughs> so I spent two weeks in Romania as an American counselor at a camp, and it was a really amazing experience. Uh, I led the kids in a bunch of leadership activities, and we went into the village in the mountains um, with a bunch of elderly people and did service activities and uh, delivered food to them because they're really isolated from the rest of um, the country and um, so it was really interesting to see all of that. Sounds like you had a nice time. Mm -hmm. Do you want to share what's coming up in the month of September? Do you have a report? Sure. Um, yes, our next football home football game is Friday, September 15th and we're um, going against Kent County High School and then our homecoming game is the 29th and it's at seven o'clock and prior to that is the parade which is from five to six p.m. and then our dance is at seven o'clock on September 30th. Thank you. Sarah, did you enjoy the MABE conference? I enjoyed it very much. It was very um, informative and I got to uh, meet the other SMOBs from student member of the board. I'm sorry, that's what we call it. Um, <laughs> I got to meet the other student members from all around Maryland. So I got to learn more about my position, why I'm here, the importance of it. And seeing the way they function with their board members was very informative and I'm glad I got to go. So thank you. Good, uh, good time. Do you have some school reports? I do. <laughs> Uh, Queen Anne's will be holding their homecoming events October 7th. Queen Anne's County High SGA also looks to ho host a general assembly for SGA delegates across Maryland the second Saturday of December. The general assembly will include leadership training and classes along with a guest speaker. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we're going to move to the citizen participation public comment. This is, this, excuse me, this is an opportunity for our public to comment. We ask that all speakers keep the following guidelines in mind. Speakers should sign the roster, including the telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to two minutes in length. Comments longer than two minutes should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a recent agenda item, an agenda item that is, is expected to appear in the future, or a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Please do not discuss items re re, uh, related to negotiations. Those items are to be discussed at the bargaining table. This is not a proper avenue to address specific student or employee personnel matters, especially those matters of a legal appeal to the board. Comments about or the actions and statements of individuals are not appropriate for public comment. Um, at this time, I have the roster and the first name signed up, and you're not limited to that. I'll open it to the public after the names are called. Uh, Royden Powell. Shall I? Yes, sit you can sit right people? there. Whatever's more comfortable for I you. Can I can speak standing up. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Royden Powell, and I'm Jeff here tonight on behalf of the Queen Anne's County High School Alumni Association. We, along with the PTSA of QACHS, are hosting an open house celebrating the 50th anniversary of QACHS. We're very excited about the event that we're doing on October 8th. We will begin at 2 p.m. in the lobby. We're hosting a variety of exhibits, which will include memorabilia over the 50 years. We're offering uh, tours of the school. We're also producing a, uh, a video, which will air in the auditorium which will be a collection of vignettes from a cross-section of alumni, uh, staff, and administrators from the school over the 50-year period. So we're excited as uh, those pieces are coming together. So we'd certainly like the board to, to be a part of that. Uh, at 4 o'clock, the Alumni Association is hosting a reception at the American Legion uh, in Centerville, and we'd like you to join us for that also. I have some flyers. I have a few copies of flyers I'd like to leave with you. I'll circulate them uh, during the break if that's appropriate. Uh, but certainly wanted to make you aware uh, of our anniversary celebration and invite you all to participate. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, the next name we have registered is Julie Rinelli. Good evening, Julie Good Rinelli, evening. resident of Stevensville, member of the American Library Association, with a letter. I think, do, I think he does need you to be by the mic oh. there so you can sit. With a letter from... You can sit if you'd like. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Powell just wanted to stand, but yeah. you can sit. Okay, as long as the light's on on the mic, you're fine. <laughs> okay, thanks. I have a letter from the American Library Association president and the president of the American Association of School Librarians. 
Today, more than ever, students must learn to navigate an increasingly complex information landscape to succeed in school, in the workplace, and in society. As Queen Anne's County Schools begin another school year, we commend the Board of Education for providing students with the information literacy experts who prepare them for this very endeavor. As you begin planning for next year, we urge you to ensure that those experts, your certified school librarians, are available to all Queen Anne's County students moving forward. We recognize that districts must examine how programs impact student learning, particularly when faced with budget challenges. As presidents of the ALA and AASL, we have reviewed years of research and we have seen what works firsthand. Consider a Pew Research Center study in which 83% of teachers indicated that students are overwhelmed by the quantity of information available online, and 60% said the increasing array of technologies makes it more difficult to locate credible information. That second finding was echoed in a recent Stanford University study that found more than 80% of middle school students struggle to distinguish credible news from sponsored content online. There is, however, good news. Maryland's own Harry and Jeanette Weinberg Foundation commissioned an analysis of more than 60 library studies and found that student achievement is higher from reading proficiency and research fluency to graduation rates in schools with effective school library programs. More recently, research in South, in South Carolina found that students with certified school librarians score higher on state reading and writing assessments. Yet another study in Washington State determined that students with professionally staffed libraries had increased access to technology tools, online resources, and digital literacy instruction. Clearly, school librarians yield a positive return on investment. Certified school librarians are leaders in vibrant learning communities because they connect all learning to literacy. They work so effectively within their communities and schools and do professional development with their teachers and staff. They build a school-wide culture of reading and inquiry that encourages lifelong learning and critical thinking. Maryland's Code of Regulations clearly defines the integral role of certified school librarians in instructional programming. In our schools, that role seamlessly expands beyond the walls of the library and throughout the schools as librarians partner with their colleagues to enhance instruction. Moreover, it reaches into the community as librarians work with the public library and other community partners to expand resources and opportunities for students and staff alike. Our school librarians are central to the district's mission of empowering students to thrive and continue to grow intellectually, physically, emotionally, and socially in a rapidly changing, globally competitive society. We urge you to honor that mission and provide all Queen Anne's County students with the certified school librarians that help ensure their continued growth and success. Signed, James Neal and Stephen Yates, presidents of the American Library Association and American Association of School Librarians. Thank you so much for making it possible this year, and we look forward to working with you again next year. Thank you. Yeah. At this time, is there anyone else who would like to speak? Well, we have on the agenda a five-minute break. Um, do we want to take a five-minute break, or do we want to continue I'm on? Continue. I'm okay. I'm we good. continue on? We can continue. Okay, let's just continue on then. So now, let's see, we move on to um, 8.01, Teacher of the Year China Update. the light came on and so that he can always hear when the lights come on. Well you don't have to sit, but there's a mic there in front of you if you want. It's your, that would it's be your great. choice. I'll drive. Oh, you'll yeah, drive. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Kane. Good evening, Board of Education. Cameron, you got your mic on. Oh, yeah. We're going to try it. Do I have to start that again? All right. I'm Tamara Forte. I am a first grade teacher this year at Centerville Elementary School. I was a kindergarten teacher for the last 12 years, and last year I spent as Teacher of the Year for our county. I had an amazing experience that I don't think a lot of people really understand. So I'm here today as an advocate and just a little bit to show you what this experience has for me and for our county as a whole. So he, oh, sorry, can you go back one second? 
Um, here you see a picture of me. I took a trip to China and I was there for 15 days. I worked with another professor from Chesapeake College and we taught for the first week along with teachers. So this will take you on that experience together. All right, this was the 10th year of the program between the community college, between Queen Anne's County, and between, it does not look at all like it's pronounced, Suzhou District. And it, therefore, an exchange cooperation. It is sponsored mostly by Suzhou over in China. They pay for us to fly over. They put us up there for the entire week, our housing, our food, and what I don't think most people understand is that they treat you like kings and queens. They open the doors for you. They don't let you walk to the car. They take care of your transportation. It, you don't even know how to act because they are so kind to us during this time. We co-planned together, and I taught 43 educators. They are teachers who teach English in China. And um, we can go to the next one. This is a little bit about the trip. We are traveling all the way across the world, the furthest I've ever been. We can keep going. Next. That's us. John Longus is the professor over at Chesapeake College at myself. The reason why we have so much luggage is because half of that is supplies that we brought with us. We fundraise for the supplies that we need because if you think about it, you get over to China and they really have nothing. I asked for a three-hole punch and they could not find it. They don't use the supplies like we use over here. So we brought everything. We brought the books. We brought the paper. We brought the prompts. If we were going to use clay or paintbrushes, everything we were going to use the entire week, we had to bring with us in those suitcases. Um, we had a lot of things donated. The schools even donated t-shirts. We had Maryland flags from senators. We really reached out to our community and even our state to get these gifts because what happens after the week, you <coughs> give them away to all the teachers. And you have no idea how excited they were to get these books to add to their classroom because the Chinese government is so strict on what books they're allowed to have. So it was like Christmas and no joke, we sung, we wish you a Merry Christmas as we were handing out these materials at the end of the week. We can keep going. Our goal of the trip for teaching was to teach reading, writing, and phonics. They wanted it creatively and cooperatively with a hands-on approach. Because if you were ever in a Chinese classroom, even in first grade, they sit on a little box seat. They're allowed to raise their hand this high. You're not allowed to raise it up like this or make any noise, no wiggles. Very strict, very structured. They don't prefer to work as a group. So what do you think the first thing we did? We switched their desk. We made them into groups. And we taught just like we teach here in Queen Anne's County. We do an amazing job, hands-on, cooperatively, working together, and they loved it. We had them singing songs and dancing to de ta. They were laughing. And they said, wow, by the end of the week, I can see that teaching English is fun. And now they'll take it back to their classrooms because we inspire them, even though it might not be the norm for how they teach over there. <coughs> it's hard to see in the back, I know, but that's the school with the bright sign right there. You can see the grand piano. And when you look out, Suzhou is really a city. It's not a small place at all. Um, their school looks very different than ours. A lot of open air space. That's just some of the supplies. We did a Dr. Seuss theme because as an elementary teacher, what better to reach with phonics and writing and reading than Dr. Seuss? We brought all his books, we brought hats, we made Dr. Seuss cat in the hats, and we had them wear it together. They loved it. A little more of this applies. You can see how it's set up. In the back, those chairs are bolted into the ground. And in the front were some desks, and then in, you'll see the pull-down screen, and then everything else was bare. Very different than our classrooms here. A little bit about what we did with them. For phonics, we had them working with clay, using paintbrushes to erase words, making the words and letters disappear. We used macaroni noodles to do punctuation and commas and periods. We did reader's theater with them. We even jigsawed and showed them that you don't have to read a whole section. 
We did writing. They did the best part of me. They used their cell phone to take a picture, and you'll see some of these. Maybe they thought their forehead or their eyes were the best part of them. Because over there, they're very self-conscious about their self, and they're not willing to put what is the best part of me. That was a great writing example, not only for our students here, but for them. The end goal was to write a Dr. Seuss-themed book, which they did, and they shared, and they made us cry by the end with some of their writing and drawing was amazing. You can see closely some of the brainstorming that was going on in groups. They're making clay words at the bottom. They play just like my first graders would, but they were learning and they didn't even realize it. They were going back and forth excitedly. They made bucket lists. We had to explain what a bucket list was to them. Their English was amazing, and if they didn't get it, they would translate on their phone very quickly. Um, over there, it's on the left, it's called the best answer. Everyone in the group uses a little sticky note to make their answer. Then they combined it together to make the best answer. And we were getting really rich ideas from these teachers. And you can see some of the teachers over on the right. And the third one over from the left is a picture of her forehead, because that was the best part of her. She said it was strong, and she went into her writing. There on the right was the Dr. Seuss books that they, we brought over with him. Again, another thing that we fundraised for. And on the left, his English name is Romeo. He got to pick it himself, of course, one of the only males in the entire class. And in their story, if you could see really close, is me and John. And they were talking about a cloud that wanted to learn a different language. And they came back to the United States with us to help learn the English language. It was an awesome story. And I felt privileged just to be drawn in their books, to tell you the truth. There's some of our Chesapeake College donated a lot of t-shirts. We had some from the middle school. Sudlersville was very kind. Cunard, Centerville Elementary all donated just shirts they might have had that they weren't using, and they loved it. They were so proud to wear them that even the next day when we met them, we saw them wearing their t-shirts. There's our Queen Anne's County brochure. I told her, would you like to come work in our county? So I was still recruiting over there. On the right is a flag that one of the senators sent to us, and they loved it. Our flag is beautiful, so they were very proud of it, too. A lot of working together. You can see they're on their phone. Drawing is very important to them. They would Google how to draw something before they would freehand it, because over there, music and art lessons are very important, and they're amazing artists. So I went back and I said, what is our goals of our county? And I wanted to show the board, show our audience here, that this trip highlights everything that we're focusing on. What I highlighted, well-educated. These teachers are amazing, and they inspired me because they're always wanting to learn the English language. Another word, they changed their phones to English settings to push them to want to know the language better. It's globally competitive. If we are knowing our counterparts across the world, now I know first grade classes across the world that I can do pen pals with. We can write letters. We're making our community for Queen Anne's County grow. And it's caring. It's amazing. By the end, we were serenaded. We were given more gifts. We were made to cry in English. They would sing to us day after day, oceans apart. I can't sing, but it was absolutely amazing the gratitude they had for us going over there. Our core values are all aligned to this program. It's innovative, it's learning centered. <coughs> the management, the social responsibility, valuing faculty and staff. I cannot thank the Board of Education for picking me and allowing me this opportunity because I was changed professionally, I was changed in my own life as well and inspired by their work ethic and how everyone, no matter what they did, from cleaning the road to serving ice cream, did it with all that they had. The person at Cold Stone served you your ice cream. She brought you water. She cleaned the windows. In the five minutes that I sat down, she did everything. And she worked with an ethic that we strive for here every single day. It was amazing. I can't, that came out kind of weird. All right, and I just went over here. Oops, sorry. We realize, those teachers and us, that we have more in common then we have different. Teaching is hard. Reaching our students, meeting the needs that we have, that they bring to us is hard, and we brainstorm together. How can we reach these students? What do we do if they don't come without 
breakfast. And you know what? Our cultures are different, but at the same, we're all focused on getting every student to achieve. And it says everyone works hard no matter what. The pride that they had in their work, their food, their architecture, they love this collaboration with us. And I look forward to, we can hit the next one. That's me with Susie. Susie was our helper and me on the left, a little sightseeing. She was absolutely amazing, another first grade teacher. Next one. I want to show you on the right is their school lunch. They're allowed to have as much as they want and it's very healthy. There's fish in there and rice. On the top is dumplings that we made. We learned how to make dumplings in the shape of fish and moon and we went to a Kung Fu fighter's house to make this. So all of the weapons are right behind me as I'm making dumplings. It was amazing. This is what every lunch and every dinner looked like over there on their dime. They were so gracious. Eat more, eat more. And the round spins, eat more. We were invited to the government offices. And what they prepared for us was absolutely beautiful and so full of gratitude. That's me on the wall of China on the right. You step up there and you think, how did people do this without machines and just animals? One block itself is heavier than me. It just brings you to, to see, one, how lucky we are in our county, how motivated we are, but also how connected we are throughout the world and how we can relate together as teachers. This is a, like a gondola boat and he was singing to us and the teachers took us out. So if we weren't eating and if we weren't teaching, they were making sure we were seeing their country. We saw the night dancing. We were on the boats. They were the most gracious hosts I have ever experienced. We got to paint Chinese characters. We went to museums. In the middle, her name is Helen and she's amazing. She oversees three to 400 English teachers. She is the boss of this program and she keeps them all in line. And she was so gracious. She was giving us the flowers and the presents when I felt like it should have been us giving them the flowers. This is our group with our Dr. Seuss hats on on our very last day. It says, I cannot thank our county enough for selecting me to represent our country all the way, our county, all the way across the world. It was amazing, it was life changing, and it was an ex experience that forever changed me. I hope this program continues, I hope it strengthens, and I hope that we are able to invite them back over. These teachers we've had in Queen Anne's County before, and we need to continue to grow the relationship with Chesapeake College and our county, even if we have some meetings and talk about what's our next step, what can we go forward with. If you research a little further, you'll see that Sue Jo um, put in a gazebo at Chesapeake College. That gazebo and then a fancy statue rock. All of these things, thousands and thousands of dollars that they've given us presents to build this relationship together. So it's something to look into. It's something to nurture and increase. It was absolutely amazing. Thank you all. Thank you. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Well, I don't have a question. I do have a, a comment, um, and, and I concur 100%. I've had an opportunity to go three times, and if somebody said, would you like to go again tomorrow, I would say, let me go pack my yeah. bag. <laughs> because there, there are so many outstanding opportunities for us to learn. So I guess I do have a question. Um, aside from the uh, comment that you made about continuing the partnership, or I don't know if, I, I don't think we're sister cities or anything like that, but I've had those types of relationships. Um, and also College Board has a, a fabulous trip that they uh, send educators on and, and that kind of thing. But I guess my question to you is what are you bringing back to your classroom? What have you learned uh, and, and what have you been able to uh, garner from that experience to put into <coughs> practical use in, in your classroom or at your school? Well, I feel like in our county and especially, am I on? Yeah especially in my classroom, that a lot of times we just focus on ourselves or we focus on what's right in front of us. We focus on the Chesapeake Bay. We focus on what we can see out our window. 
but now I bring a whole nother approach and I've already we've been there two days I've already started to talk to the boys and girls about how I traveled across the world and we talk about different learning and now the best part is is they want to pen pal with us writing it's bringing it to show them that how connected we are and remembering that we need to get outside of our bubble a lot and we need to take part. So in the learning, um, I moved up a grade this year from kindergarten to first grade and I know when I did teach second grade, there was a part, um, they involved Japan in there and just to involve that culture back in. And also if we have students that are from that area, that also enriches me. So it's basically broadening my teaching abilities because we had to work together a lot, and that first day was hard. We had to communicate back and forth. We had to set boundaries. We had to set rules because the way we learn is so different. And again, that was something we had to establish. You know, you need to look at a speaker, not be on your phone or not talk or not rush after the first direction. So again, that makes me take a step back and realize about my teaching strategies, about parents, about families that might come from other countries. And also just bringing that into my classroom. I love culture and I was in it and I want them to be able to be in it as much as possible. Whether that be sending little things back and forth in the mail or getting emails or writing to a buddy. Just broadening the horizon for all the students and parents that I come in contact with. Thank you, thank you for that. So I'm looking forward and I'm sure our curriculum instruction team is to having more conversations with you and, and thinking about how we might all capitalize on your experience yeah. and continue to build in and possibly do some of that teacher exchange. And I would love to bring them over. That would be amazing for We can time. exchange pictures. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, have a good Thank you. At this time, we're gonna move on to FY19 CIP. Good evening, Vice President DiMaggio, members of the board and Dr. Kane. My name is Carla Pullen. I'm the Facilities Planner for Queen Anne's County Public Schools, Office of Supporting Services. And I'm here this evening to discuss with you our building and construction funding requests that we are going to submit to the state for fiscal year 2019. Tonight, I just wanna to outline to you what the Capital Improvement Program is, talk to you about how the state of Maryland calculates our funding, give you an idea of schedule, what's happening when, and talk to you specifically about what we're planning for our fiscal year 2019 funding requests. Tonight we'll review the upcoming schedule and our requirements uh, as, uh, as the school system. Um, we'll prepare you to discuss at the next board meeting on October 4th, the final submission package to the state and we'll be asking for your approval at that time. The submission will go to the state on October 4th. We do have a board meeting that evening where we'll be discussing this. And we will be presenting our request to the Maryland Board of Public Works, the governor, the comptroller, and the treasurer on October 18th. In fact, we were just notified that we were scheduled for a meeting a week earlier as well. So we'll be meeting with the public school construction folks and then with the Board of Public Works on the 18th. Our capital improvement program is a two-part process. Back in June and July, I brought to you an informational plan that was our Educational Facilities Master Plan. That's part one. It's a long-range plan. It looks at our enrollment projections. It looks at our community, and it looks at our needs in the long range. The second part of this is the CIP, what we will be submitting in October, and that is our upcoming fiscal year. It looks out a little bit at future years, and it looks specifically at our funding needs. What type of money and assistance do we need from the state? The types of projects that we look at for the CIP are prioritized projects. These are age and building condition. Uh, we 
are relying very heavily now on the facility assessment documents that we've talked to you about for quite some time now to determine what those priorities are. For a project to go to the state for funding, it has to be over $200,000 or more. Any projects that are anticipated to be under $200,000 are typically funded locally. So we will be asking the commissioners for those. The CIP program is a requirement that's written in state law to be considered for school construction funding. We have to submit this document. So that's why I'm here to explain it to you tonight and then to ask for your approval in October. We have a statewide cost share formula. It's a cost share split. The state gives us a portion and then the uh, local community, local government gives us the other portion of those costs. The way this is calculated, it's a formula that takes into account a number of different items. They look at participation in state programs by the county. They look at free and reduced lunch percentages. They look at unemployment rates, per capita income, and population growth. Currently, we have a 50-50 split between the state and county funding. So essentially, for eligible construction costs, the state gives us 50% of a project the county then puts in 50%. They are recalculating right now these percentages for the next three years. This is not formal in any way yet. The last information that I saw was that we'll bump up just a tiny bit to a 51% state uh, formula and that would take us to 49% with our local <coughs> funding. How's this calculated by the state? First, what they do is look at our projected enrollment per school, per project, and then they multiply that by a square footage number per student. For general projects, it's 108 square feet per student, and that gets us to the eligible size for a project. Step two is they take that eligible project size, they multiply it by the state cost per square foot. Every year, the state determines what the cost of a new building or renovation should be. Last year, the cost started at $265 per square foot. They did give us a little bit more toward the end of the cycle at $293 per square foot. We hope we will stay at least there or above. And so we look at the project size, times the state cost that gives us our eligible construction costs. Just to give you an overall view of our submission schedule, the Educational Facilities Master Plan happens in July. We submit our CIP in October. In March, we go to the county government with our requests, and then funding doesn't become available for those projects until July 1. The exception for this is planning and design. That is not something that is eligible for state reimbursement, and we typically are looking at that one to two years before a project will go under construction. So that happens a little bit in advance of the typical CIP schedule. Our priorities for fiscal year 2019. We will be asking for assistance from the state with two large systemic projects this year. This is the Church Hill Elementary School Chiller Replacement and the Kent Island High School Chiller Replacement. These are HVAC projects. The chiller is a component that <coughs> cools the water. The water is then piped throughout buildings, connects to the air handlers, and it's essentially what cools our air in these buildings. Church Hill Elementary. We anticipate that a chiller would have a 15 to 20 year lifespan. Churchill Elementary, we are getting to the end of life with that. It's 17 years old and has been exhibiting some signs of wear. Ken Island High School, this system is 16 years old. We're looking at staying ahead because it is such a large building, staying ahead of any needed repairs and looking at the efficiency of that unit as well. So the second part of the equation for fiscal year 2019 is what we will then request from the county at the beginning of next year. We know that the bond capacity of the county right now is limited 
due to the courthouse project that they're currently constructing. So our goal will be to request money to repair items that showed up in our facility assessment that were either in the poor or the failed column. So far, we have started to take care of a number of these items, but if we look at the current list, there are still about $5.5 million worth of items that are listed in the need for repair column. Now, with that being said, many of these items are asphalt projects, so about $800,000 goes to parking and to asphalt repair. And what we'll be doing as part of our prioritization is looking at the building needs first. And then part of this money is also looking at the central office building. There are about $3 million of repairs that have shown up in the facility assessment as poor and or in urgent need of repair for this particular building. Things like fire alarm and fire doors, which can be life safety issues, parking lot site lighting, which doesn't exist here, wood window replacement, plumbing replacement for the entire building, and HVAC systems. The central office, when you look at our facility assessment, in 10 years, we're looking at probably a cost of $5 million that needs to be spent on this building. In 20 years, probably more like seven to $8 million. So I'm gonna take you back to the slide that we looked at first and just bring a couple of things to your attention because there are a few items that have changed since the CIP was submitted to you last year. Given the current anticipated costs for repair and replacement of the central office building, we would like to start to discuss with the commissioners the possibility of a feasibility study just a study at this point to look at the renovation or the replacement of the central office building and Anchor Points Academy. Unfortunately, this project would only allow us a small amount of state funding because it doesn't house a large number of students. Our Anchor Points Academy, if we look at roughly 50 students there, that would allot about a million dollars to this project. So that's why we feel the need to begin those discussions with the commissioners, give them some of our rationale, and that shows up as our number three item on this list. We know that the study itself is gonna be pretty costly for this, but we'd like to look at at least three different options, and that would be looking at the renovation of this building where it is, looking at the potential for a new building here on site somewhere, and then looking at the potential of a new building off site as well, which would require county input uh, on a different site. The renovation to Centerville Middle School. Previously in our CIP requests, we have been looking at funding for a limited renovation. And a limited renovation is just the upgrade of five different systems within the building. So looking at plumbing upgrades, looking at removal of the metal walls that still exist from the open plan classrooms. However, in the past, we've utilized a, a large sum of state money already to make modifications to that school. So we've made upgrades to HVAC, to technology, lighting, plumbing. Because that work has taken place less than 15 years ago, the state will require that we deduct that money from what we're eligible for. So that starts to creep into very quickly the money that we'll have allotted for a limited renovation. So what we would like to propose is that the best course of action would be to wait and do a full renovation of that building. It has not undergone a renovation or an addition since it was built. What that would entail would be planning approval in 2022, so extending this project to 2022, and then beginning construction in 2023, 2024. Another item that you will see that's a little bit different from the CIP last year is that we have removed the line item for a new CTE center, just the plans for that 
at this particular moment until we've had a chance to better study the programs and determine a good course of action for this building and our suggestions. We've also removed from our CIP request this year the future plans for a new elementary school in South County. This had been placed on our CIP list when the sewer expansion project was still in the works and now that that has begun we're not seeing that the population will have a huge growth over the next number of years. So we've removed that one for the time being as well until we have more information that our populations are growing in that end of the county. One other thing that I wanted just to talk about quickly was uh, we have a new executive director for the public school construction program. His name is Robert Gorl. He replaces Dr. David Lever, if anybody was familiar with working with him in the past. I had an opportunity to meet him recently in Cecil County with some of my counterparts from other counties. And he has a lot of visions for where the public school construction program will go in the next few years. One of those is that he would like to see an overall state rating for all of our buildings, which means that our county buildings would be in a ranking system <coughs> against all of the other schools in the state as well. And that's how we would be put into priority to receive funding. So I know there's still a lot of work that's coming out of his office. We will probably see many more changes, um, but we know that there's a potential that the way that we operate with state funding could possibly change in the next few years. So in conclusion, by September 20th, I will make the CIP full submission available for your review. October 4th, we would like to request your approval for this document at your regularly scheduled meeting. On October 18th, we will then be meeting with the Board of Public Works to present our request for the year. And by November 30th, the state asks that the county gives us a commitment to support any of the projects that the state is looking at funding. And if you recall, this causes some difficulty with the county because they haven't yet received that that time, November 30th, they haven't received a lot of the requests that they'll be getting from other departments. Um, and they have supported us in the past and, and we appreciate that. I am available to answer any questions that you might have. And I would also welcome you to contact me if there's anything that you think about in the meantime. Yes, ma'am. I have a couple of questions. Um, yes. Your feasibility study for this building in APA, and part of that we had, at one point somebody was questioning on the board the, um, the whole APA program. And is that going to be part of that? Because, it was, you know, there were some ideas of doing that in the actual schools. And um, so. At this time, again, why we have added this to our CIP document is that we want to start the conversation with the commissioners. I think there is still a lot of conversation to be had about the future thoughts for Anchor Points Academy. One of the benefits of maintaining uh, that entity within the central office is for funding and also the possibility that we could look at state-of-the-art technology, state-of-the-art classrooms in that building because it would be a new facility that might be beneficial to the students at Anchor Points Academy as well. Okay. I just want to jump in here, um, uh, Captain Kelly, because this was brought up done one of our work sessions, I believe, in the spring. And uh, upon uh, Dr. Kane's uh, entry, one of the things that uh, in briefing her about Anchor Points Academy, number one is to really do an audit of all of our alternative programs to see what's really working as we service our students. Uh, does it make more sense to maybe move an alternative program back at each one of the high schools? Does it make sense to redesign alternative education, attach it possibly or potentially to a new central office in order to receive funding? So I know that's something that Dr. Kane and I have spoken about, and we plan on doing an audit uh, within the next month that will share that with the board on, uh, on some of the strengths of the program as well as maybe some of the areas of challenge that we need to rethink about. 
Thank you, um, and I agree with you on that. I don't, I don't have a, a definitive, you know, request either way on anchor points. I see pros and cons, um, um, and the, the you're looking at all the alternative programs. Is that the idea where you're lo also looking at the curriculum to um, for the uh, um, in, in, uh, for the uh, additional help students get out there, the interventions, and you know, we had talked about that last year. Sure. Is that all part of what it, it will? It's, it, it will be a, <coughs> a, a comprehensive review, if you will, of the entire program, how we're delivering the curriculum, uh, looking at our online program, uh, how students enter the program, how they exit the program. Uh, as you know, that's been one of our dropout prevention uh, strategies that we've used very successfully. So. Um, we'll be happy to update you once we conduct that and have the findings and bring that back with some recommendations. Okay, great. The, the other, another one I had was um, the feasibility study that we had talked about for the mid-county mid or between the two high school CTE. Are we, have we completely dropped that? Because that was like, I think, about a $500,000 item. And because yes. you were talking about well, it's because you dropped the South County Elementary School um, idea because we don't have the population. Yeah. We still have Mattapique Elementary overloaded. We still have a ninth grade annex. We still have all the problems at the high schools with portables. Um, and I know, in fact, that there's some classes for the ninth, for the eighth grade going up into the ninth grade annex. So. I, I, I don't want us to be behind the eight ball when we get to that point. Sure, um, and it is something that we're keeping our eye on definitely. We have regular discussions with the county. Um, when the construction for the sewer project began, we sat down and met with them, and what they anticipate in their first few years of building permits is to see an increase of approximately 140 students in all grades in that area. So we do realize that there are issues, <coughs> especially at the high school, and we do still have in our future plans the potential for an addition to both high schools, knowing that if we do see a population increase in that area, the middle school then that houses part of our high school students, we do have problems there. And there could potentially at some point be an issue at Mattapique Elementary. In the next seven years, the enrollment projections don't strengthen it enough to have support from the state for funding on that level, but that could change. Could change quickly, could change easily. Okay, um, on the high school thing too, um, in conjunction with that was this feasibility study for put, instead of just putting additions at the two high schools, is that the thing we want to do or do we want to build? the CTE school, which brings in all of those um, trades and things into one school and, and better use of the high schools, separate high schools on the outside. That was all part of that feasibility study, which we right. we delayed that when we did the assessment, the facility assessment, because that cost about the same thing. Um, so, and we were, we were okay with that. That was a couple of years ago. And so I'm just okay. wondering, I just, I'm afraid to completely drop the concept um, unless you've been given word that it, it's something we shouldn't be considering. No, and I don't think the idea that the concept is completely off the table. What the state has asked us, because every year we continue to put it out a little bit further, the state has asked us what our commitment is, where the numbers are that we are seeing, and at this point we don't have that information. So that is something that over the next few years, I think we will be looking at, and I, I think that there's potential for the CTE programs maybe to even expand, and that would give us more information to go with. Again, I don't believe that it's something that we're taking off the table, just off the table for right now, so that the state isn't looking at potentially holding funds for that in a future year. So, so one of the things that we like to do is to really get a handle on the CTE, the career pathways that are going to help our students um, earn the skills or learn the skills and, and earn a livable wage so that we're ensuring that what we're teaching and what we're preparing our students for are 
reflective of workforce demand. So we need to do an assessment of our current C thank you, Mr. Pender, of our current CTE programs, look at the numbers where we currently have students, and we really need to build that program. We have a lot of partners who want to do good work with us, and so we're geared up to uh, begin having those conversations and those meetings with partners to begin to build those programs and ensure that we're building the correct career pathways that align with workforce demand. So we've got some work to do. So it's not off the table. We just want to ensure that what we're looking at is, is, um, is, is going to be funded and it's really going to re uh, respond to demand. Great, because I think part of your expertise was a Absolutely. lot of experience in that mm -hmm. area. So I, was look, I look forward to that. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Other questions? Are, does anyone else have any questions? Um, I did. Yes. In the event that we did do study and we determined that this building needed to go and a new building would be put in its place and perhaps here on site, do we have space for that <coughs> without tearing this down first? Potentially, yes. Oh, okay. I didn't know how big our grounds were beyond the parking lot. Yes. And anchor points. <laughs> yes, they're in, in the back lot here. That's Where they awesome. land the helicopter a lot of times. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's it. Because I kind of thought, um, where are we going to put everybody? <laughs> 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 yes. We've already torn down our well, building. Wait a minute, and we better make another thing clear. So no one's talking about tearing down no. this Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. That's Please, another public. concern. No one is right. talking about tearing down this right. Right. Yes. <laughs> Okay, Thanks, so Carly. thank you very all much. Right. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. So at this time, we're going to move on to 8.04, the monthly expenditure report. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Opening, <laughs> opening of school presentation. Sorry, Mr. Police. It's okay. <laughs> it's all good. I was moving ahead. <laughs> it won't be long. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Acting President DiMaggio, uh, Acting Vice President George, uh, Board Members Harlow and Kelly, and Superintendent uh, Dr. Kane. For the record, my name is Greg Paluski, Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum Instruction, and I'm honored uh, this evening for our executive team members, as well as myself, to share with you this evening our opening of schools report for the 2017-2018 school year. Joining me this evening are my colleagues, Mr. Sin Pinder, Director of Operations, uh, Mr. Mark Farley, Director of Human Resources, and Ms. Robin Landgraf, our Chief Financial Officer. The purpose of our report this evening is to update you and communicate with you key items from the Departments of Curriculum Instruction, operations, human resources, budget and finance. And this evening we will begin with the Department of Curriculum and Instruction. Instructional leadership. A key component for a successful school year started in June of 2016 at our two-day Leadership Institute when all of our school leadership teams worked together with central office staff unpacking their data from 16-17 school year and conducting a root cause analysis to identify gaps in student learning with a focus on equity. Teams worked on updating their school improvement plans, identifying key strategies to put in place for the coming school year, strategic professional development plans to support classroom teachers in improving teaching and learning, the bottom line of the business of what we do. Finally, our Innovation Center teams reflected on their deliverables and plan for the 17 and 18 school year. Another key element was our three-day August Leadership Institute with all of our school leadership teams that received professional development on a variety of topics, including 17-18 classroom instructional expectations, monitoring practices, platforms for analyzing data, curriculum updates, school discipline, bullying, harassment, and bias-motivated motiva incident reporting, cultural proficiency, equity, school safety and planning, human resources, budget and finance, and operation updates. This Leadership Institute is a successful initiative and for a successful school year. Finally, we have four new principals to Queen Anne's County Public Schools, two new assistant principals, and two principals in their second year. Ms. Janet Pauls, our program director of teacher and leadership development, has done a tremendous job onboarding our new principals and assistant principals while ensuring that they have the support and resources that they need to have a successful start this week. 
curriculum instructional tools and assessment. As outlined in the 2016 curriculum management audit, a key district focus was to develop aligned high quality curriculum documents for teachers to follow. This summer, our dynamic and dedicated curriculum instruction supervisors under Ms. Paul's leadership led our curriculum development writing teams in the creation and revision of over 60 curricular documents. These documents provide teachers with more clear expectations on the standards to teach, options for delivery, and ways to measure student learning. All key ingredients to improving student learning. Also, supervised worked with writing teams to revise numerous formative and summative assessments to support teachers with aligned tools to accurately remeasure student learning. Finally, our curriculum writing teams embedded technology tools and strategies to support teachers with those options on how to deliver particular standards and ways to differentiate to meet the individual needs of our students. Materials of instruction. One of the major new materials of instruction adoptions for 2017 and 18 school year is for grades K to 5 elementary science. The new Hooten Mifflin Harcourt Science uh, Dimensions programs provide teachers and students with hands on interactive activities, both in print and online materials aligned to the next generation science standards. All elementary teachers received three hours of professional development last week and an opportunity to become more familiar with the materials under the leadership of Mr. Michael Page, our supervisor of science. Teachers have everything uh, that they need to begin start teaching this week. However, there was a delay in shipping our science kits uh, that are consumables of the new series. Provisions have been made for teachers to make adjustments in their teaching sequence while the kits are actually shipped to different grade levels over the next three weeks. School improvement. This year we worked with all of our school leadership teams to communicate the structure of our superintendent monitoring visits that will take place twice once in the fall and once in the winter at each school. The purpose of each visit is to monitor school improvement plans and strategies, further unpack the gaps uh, that exist in student learning data and engage each principal and his or her leadership team in, in closing those gaps, especially among African Americans, special education, English learners, and farm students. Evidence collected and information gathered during the visits will be used to inform further professional development for our administrators. And finally, professional development. This year, we welcomed over 40 new teachers to Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Ms. Pauls, uh, Ms. Bridget Passan, uh, Ms. Susan Walbert, supervisors that provided a full week of onboarding activities for new teachers to successfully transition into the Queen Anne's County Public Schools and work with their principals at their schools to get more acquainted with their building, the faculty and staff, and most importantly, their classrooms as they open this week. Our talented pool of new teachers entering our organization adds a level of excitement to supporting our next generation of Queen Anne's County teachers that are truly rock stars. They are off to a fabulous start in having a successful school year. On August 29th and 30th, the Department of Curriculum Instruction provided over 60 professional development sessions to all of our teachers and instructional support staff, principals, assistant principals, and academic deans. Topics that included new curricular units, model lessons, materials, assessments, instructional materials, instructional strategies, data analysis, instructional planning, and equity as a system focus in an effort to close gaps in student learning. In summary, we are off to an outstanding start for the 2017-18 school year, and we look forward to supporting the great work that is taking place in our schools by our teachers, our administrators, our supervisors, and our support staff every single day. And with that, Mr. Pinder. Good evening, board members, Dr. King. My name is uh, Sid Pinder. I'm the Director of Operations. And what I wanted to do was just kind of go over a brief overview of a lot of items that we worked on this past summer to get the schools ready for yesterday and also um, tomorrow when pre-k and k students come um, we just a quick breakdown to go over the summer maintenance construction projects team cleaning athletics transportation and our alice training that we performed uh, along with the queen's county sheriff's department and also centerville pd uh, a few highlights from the summer maintenance construction projects we were able to um, install a new storefront at Sutlersville Elementary School to replace the old one that was falling apart. Um, we were able to also put a single point entry in, uh, making it more secure so that everybody has to walk into the um, main office. 
Uh, we were also able to do a single point entry at Churchill Elementary School. And at both of those schools, we were able to paint the uh, historic portion of the front of it um, that was built in the early 1900s, um, the windows and all that stuff. So those two schools are looking pretty, uh, pretty good. Uh, Mattapique Elementary School, we were able to uh, correct some drainage problem there. The students, uh, basically the way the building was laid out, the water would run into the uh, playground area and in the wintertime would freeze up and cause a lot of problems. So um, we put a lot of thought into that and came up with a uh, really good solution. And so far out of the past two rainstorms we've had, it has been bone dry. So uh, hopefully the teachers are excited about that and also students. Centerville Elementary School, we were able to uh, replace the first grade hallway floor and uh, install one um, in there that was much needed. Some other projects, uh, we replaced transformers at Centerville Middle School, Queen Anne's County High School. We had a lot of roof work that was done, some painting that was done over the summertime, some flooring work. Um, I want to credit the, the maintenance department. There's only nine of them, but they really do an excellent job. And we try to use all local contractors whenever we can, um, working on any of our projects to help our community here. Uh, the other major um, accomplishment, or we're striving towards that, is the uh, installation of the access controls at all of the doors in the, in the county. Right now we have uh, four schools done, and we are going about two schools every two to three weeks finishing those, because obviously you have to run the wire, and it, it takes it's a lot of time put into it. But we'll have some safer schools when we get done that. Um, as far as uh, team cleaning, we have about 70 custodians. Uh, they did an excellent job. I, I can't say enough about them and uh, David Carter, their foreman. Uh, it takes a lot. I don't think people realize how much they do in the summertime. They're cleaning the schools from top to bottom, stripping the floors completely, waxing the floors, getting everything ready. And at the same time, they're juggling summer schools that are in there. They're juggling um, you know, some tutoring, they're juggling parks and rec, other activities that are going on. And it takes a really coordinated effort. And I just want to give them uh, a shout out because they really step up to the plate. And, I walked the schools this past weekend, and I, I think in the three years I've been in this position, I, I was the most pleased I've been um, in those three years. I know we had an extra week, um, and they truly appreciated having that in there. Um, along with the custodians, we did our annual um, in-service uh, two weeks ago for um, Moshe, OSHA, all of our bloodborne pathogens, um, and having them together for, a, you know, a whole day to actually show your appreciation for them, you know, is, is something that I, I kind of cherish. Our athletic department, as many of you know, we had the post Labor Day start. Athletics still began at the uh, date that we issued it. And it was kind of interesting because uh, it was one of the first times I can recall um, growing up around here that we had a football game before school actually started. That's right. And, <laughs> And I, I want to say, and it goes out to the community, I, I don't know if you ladies got to attend, but both schools were very well uh, attended in the stands. Queen Anne's County um, actually had the Ravens Rise, where they had uh, some cheerleaders in the Ravens um, um, there for uh, a $1,000 donation to the athletic department um, at Queen Anne's County High School. With the um, Athletics, we now, for the fall, at uh, Queen Anne's County High School, we have 339 students participating on 16 teams. At Ken Allen High School, we have 353 students participating on 16 teams. Um, two other things to note, uh, we were able to paint the um, field houses inside at both high schools. I think uh, Donnie Griff, who's the football coach at uh, Queen Anne's County High School, said that was the first time since uh, he painted it when he first started teaching. Um, so it was nice to see that happen um, there. Um, one other thing, we were able to continue the impact testing, which is the uh, baseline test for concussion. For last year, we did every student. This year, we were able just to do the um, incoming freshmen, and that will help uh, for us if they have a concussion of going back and retesting to compare it to the baseline data, along with having the uh, athletic trainers. And I want to thank you for that. That um, really has gone very well the past year, having the athletic trainer at each high school. Um, one other plug, uh, Ken Allen High School, at your football game, you were honoring the veterans and um, local responders, and they had a tent set up for VIP and you know, gave them special treatment. So I, I think that was a, a job well done by your principals at that school.
Um, transportation, that is a never ending um, analyzing of data. Over the summertime, um, Ms. Margaret Ellen uh, Kalvinovich meets with the routing committee of bus drivers to look at the numbers, um, the capacity on the buses, where maybe we can change a few routes. Um, one of the items we looked at this past summer was, um, you're never going to eliminate this, but where can we uh, el eliminate, for the most part, school buses backing up? Um, at, you know, you're never going to eliminate it, but you know, it's really something that we look at to try to analyze because that's where some of your accidents or most of your accidents are going to occur. We did have our training um, that Dr. Kane spoke about for all bus drivers, both uh, county bus drivers and our contractors. And I um, want to thank them for helping participate this summer in a lot of our meetings. Um, the, uh, the four LLCs have really done a nice job working with us this past uh, summer. The last thing I want to talk, touch base on is ALICE training. And the state of Maryland has the Maryland Center for School Safety. And this past winter, they offered a ALICE training, which is uh, alert, lockdown, inform, counter, and um, evacuate. And there was hands-on training where you were using pellet guns, things like that to simulate an active shooter, an active attack in a school. And it really made you think when you were getting hit by those pellets, um, <laughs> what chances you had and what, you know, what tools we have in our toolbox. And you hear the acronym ALICE, It also there's other programs, Run, Hide, Fight. And just real quickly, one of the things we learned from Columbine um, and a few other mass shootings, it wasn't that the, the shooter was a marksman, it was how the students were instructed to line up against the wall or underneath the tables. So they were very easy targets. Now, it, it's kind of a hard concept because as educators, you want to know where all of your students are at all the time. But one of the items is, you know, fleeing, evacuating. If the opportunity exists, can you get out of a window? You know, can you get out that door, run down the hallway? And trying to empower the teachers to have that concept of, hey, um, I don't have to ask the principal for this decision. I mean, you know, we're going to make it because um, we want to save as many lives as we can. And, you know, simple things like taking a belt off and putting it around the, uh, the door closer. Um, we were able to put um, blackout blinds, you know, up there. We're teaching them how to um, barricade the doors if they have to barricade themselves in there. Um, and they're also teaching, um, this I want to say teaching, the Queen County Sheriff's Department in Centerville PD, um, are some resistance, you know, of can you do a gang tackle on somebody? I mean, and you've got to look at the age of this, you know, when you're doing it. Are you doing it with the pre-K K students, you know, are you doing it with high school students? Um, and I want to, you know, Sar or, uh, Sergeant Sean Hampton of the Sheriff's Department um, is scheduling uh, times where he's going to the schools. He's done, I think, three already where we're taking this to the next level of where we're at with this kind of training. Um, and the hardest, like I said, the hardest thing to realize is if you're evacuating and you're running, all right, you, you got a good chance and we'll find you. But as a teacher, you always are looking at your, uh, your role, your roster going, okay, you know, where's Mr. Maggio? You know, where's Dr. Kane? They're here, they're here. Well, you know what? It's much safer for them if they can get out. We can find them later on than finding a body somewhere. Um, and doing those drills, it really does start to make you think about uh, what you need to do and what you need to be prepared. So I wanted to give a, sh uh, a plug to the Sheriff's Department for that. So basically, in an overview, that's kind of the five areas that I oversee, and it's been a, um, a busy summer. So without any questions, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Uh, Farley in the HR department. Thank you, Mr. Pender. So um, when we got started about a year ago, and when I arrived, we had 264 policies in three different areas, not most of which were on the web. Some were in a sort of curly-tipped yellow um, documents in a binder, some were on a CD, a few were on the web. Uh, we've worked hard to start getting them organized. They're not even close to where they need to be, but we've got a lot of work left to do. Um, this is a priority as we go into this next year. Um, it's a priority for everyone's benefit to get them organized and decide which ones are the most important and to create um, a calendar of what order we're going to take them in and who's going to take the lead in them. Uh, our communications function, the web, the social media, 
uh, how we'll roll out videos, how we'll uh, address uh, Twitter, um, and who's going to do what, um, in what order is, a, is our next priority. Um, yeah, as social media changes and everyone understands their role in it and how we can be careful and be good role models for our students in responsible use of those um, tools uh, are more areas that we have to grow in and, and use as good instructional tools. Um, we also want to be good responsible partners with our collective bargaining partners. Uh, and prepare for our October start. Hopefully we'll get started right on time and finish in time to move forward with our collaborative efforts to seek resources and to, uh, to determine what money we have to work with or what non-monetary areas we can collaborate on uh, so we can keep our processes moving. Uh, I think it's going to be a challenging year economically, and I just want to be upfront about that. Um, but then also to, uh, to look for areas where we can innovate throughout the course of the year, whether that's uh, in terms of our process improvements or our organizational <coughs> structures to do things smarter to achieve better results so we're spending money uh, in better ways. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. <laughs> Okay, and last but certainly not least is budget and finance. Um, we had this year we were able to get a grant for about th a little over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which expanded our pre-K program up in the Southerville area, which is wonderful. We're going to be able to offer all day an all-day program for approximately sixty students. Um, we were able to hire two that grant. Specifically, we were able to hire two additional teachers and two additional paraeducators um, to outfit all the rooms that are up there that needed to be outfitted for these new pre-K programs and to buy the instructional materials for those programs through this grant. So that was a wonderful thing. Um, the second one that we were able to get this year, which is new, is a substance abuse grant. And this is through the Governor's Office of Crime Control and Prevention. <coughs> um, and what we were able to purchase with this grant is we're going to have two part-time substance abuse counselors that are essentially going to be back here at the alternative program um, to help those students and then one part-time transition coordinator which will help those students back get back into their regular school so that they don't spend as much time back here. Um, so those are two great grants that we were able to get. Um, I have to give a shout out to Susan Walbert and Elizabeth Miller. She's the um, uh, coordinator for the Judy Center. They were able to, they applied for the pre-K grant and got that. And then Mr. Brad Engel was the one for the substance abuse grant. Um, the other thing that has been very challenging for us this year, as Mr. Paluski said, we hired 40 new teachers um, this year, but that doesn't, um, incorporate all the transfers that we have also made people who have moved from one building to the other so making all of those adjustments um, in addition to that we have changed the platform which we have all of our benefits we just finished open enrollment which was very late this year because we changed the platform that we were using from benefit focus to plan source and we are still in the process of um, getting all of the files loaded and understanding how of all, all the data exchange is going to work. Um, we changed several other things. Uh, life insurance went from the prudential to the standard. Our flex spending accounts went from task to flexible benefit administrators. So there were a lot of things that were happening that hit us as of September 1. Um, that you know we needed to work through but we were successful in getting our first payroll done the ACH has been sent to the bank and and Friday morning the money should be in everybody's account so <laughs> and we're working on getting all the salary letters out um, today as a matter of fact they were stuffing those so um, retiree health care premiums we were able to switch that over um, we have we have almost 400 people who are on our retiree health care believe it or not and out of that almost 400 people, over 300 of them elected to have their health care now deducted from their state retirement check. So that's going to be a very good thing for the department and um, saving money for the, the school system. 
Um, the last thing I want to bring up is in the beginning of August, I know a lot of the employees had contacted us about concerns about Anne Arundel Medical Center and Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield um, coming to an agreement. They have come to an agreement. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that. And um, on August 7th, they came to a three-year agreement that's going to, that was effective as of September 1, and there should be no disruption in care and no disruption in coverage. So just so that everybody understands that that did happen. And that's really all I have. Um, so are there any questions for the, the executive team? Good work. That's all I have to say. Right. I'd like to thank the executive team for that update. And just for our board members, what would normally happen is we would prepare a readiness for the opening of schools report for you so that you can understand how prepared we are for schools. But since we did not have a board meeting that second um, um, uh, week in August, then school started so <laughs> and so today being the second day of school we just want you to have some idea of what has gone into getting prepared for it so thank you team for that yes, thank well you done very much miss Landgraf I have one question to a couple questions the PK sure. expansion pre-k expansion yeah. you said just to clarify for the public it's not a full day program it's two no it's full two. No, it, it, a it full is day. a full day program full day. is this there will be actually three full day um, pre-k classrooms at Sutler's Elementary School. So, okay. I, is this experiment? Because we're not, I don't understand that. It, it, it is. It's, it's three uh, pre-K classes okay. that are full day pre-K. Okay. And they're all at, uh, at Sutlersville Elementary then? That is The correct. three of them? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, we, we had locally um, one pre-K class was funded, which in the past has been two half-day sessions right. mm -hmm. and so with this grant we were able to hire two additional teachers and so they have three full day sessions now okay good um and then these substance abuse counselors are are those the on, only going to be available to the apa or, or would other high school kids if they needed Right, so there is some support for the other schools. They are housed at APA. Mm -hmm. um, that was how the grant was written, but some support certainly will be offered to the two high schools, absolutely. <coughs> okay, great, mm -hmm. thank you. Or middle schools, too, potentially. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Langford. Sure. Now we can move on to the monthly expenditure report. <laughs> I guess I should have just, on back. <laughs> just stayed there. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't get far. Um, you have two reports. These are the standard reports that um, I have provided you each month. And the one is a very um, summarized report, which basically breaks down by category where we are in expenditures um, out of our $90.2 million budget. At this point, uh, we have only spent 20% of it, which is logical because <laughs> we're just starting to get um, paying teachers and whatnot. The second report gives you a little more detail than the first. Um, and essentially, the categories or the areas that are have the most expenditures showing are where we have obligated salaries for 12-month employees. And then you'll see the um, places where there are 10 month employees, there's no obligation for those salaries at this point. So, are there any questions on either of those reports? Okay. Anyone? Thank you. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to move on to the current action items and we will move on to the HR report. May I have a motion to approve the HR report as presented? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Then we will move on to 9.20 transportation report, new bus purchase. Mm -mm. No new bus purchase. No new bus purchase? No. Uh, we're looking for the approval of the 2017-2018 substitute bus drivers. Yeah. Substitute. That was presented okay, uh, that. Mm -hmm. earlier tonight. I make a motion that we approve the substitute bus drivers 2017-2018 as presented in closed session. 
I second, second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. 9.03 in category transfer letter. Okay. Uh, this is a transfer letter uh, that I am requesting to be sent to the county commissioners. Um, anytime that we have a transfer within a category between um, an op, I call them objects, between salaries and contracts and those kinds of things, we need to inform the county commissioners that we're doing that. Um, you can see that most of these are very small dollar amounts and this is just basically cleaning up June 30th numbers and making sure that we have adequate budget to cover all of the expenditures. So I would just like um, to ask that this be allowed to be sent to the county commissioners. I, I do have a couple of questions. Um, pupil personnel workers, what is that? I'm, I've lost what that is, Ms. Langer. Um We have two PPWs in the county um, I, I'm going to, I'm looking at Greg to, to bail me sure. out here. <laughs> Our, uh, we have uh, two PPWs that work under the leadership of Mr. Brad Engel. Uh, they serve a variety of support systems. One of the things that they'll go out to do is they'll go out and do home visits um, with families and with students. Uh, they also serve as part of our, if we have a crisis that's going on in a school, they're also part of a team that does that as well. Uh, it's more on the social service side. Uh, they also uh, support in, in discipline cases as well. Uh, the, <coughs> we only have two. Uh, we, we could probably use about four more, uh, but they, um, uh, Matt and Leslie, do, do a wonderful job under Mr. Mr. Engel's shop. And, and for example, Mr. Evans did a yeoman's job in um, getting us information and assuring that we had uh, support for students in Kent Island who may have been affected by the tornado. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, I just didn't remember seeing sure. this before. And the other one is the um, home hospital teacher travel. I'm just interested about, about how many students are we servicing at home? These are maybe students that have to, that we're obligated to, to teach at home if, there's, if they can't get home because of met, um, physical problems and things. Right. Um, I just wonder what our numbers were. Off the there. top of my head, I don't know what the numbers are, but I can certainly get you that information just, for last year. Oh, you know. Um, I know that Miss Jean Cardwell um, is the person who basically has been taking, you know, care of that. Um, so I, I can get you those numbers. Okay. Those it's not a lot of money. I was just wondering what, um, what the number. I think we have had an increase in the number of students that are receiving home hospital. Okay. Uh, Ms. Cardwell anticipates they may need as many as <coughs> 90 this year. The numbers are going up. 90. And, um, and much of it is not physical but emotional. And so um, we're working and we've had some discussions about the need to, to enrich our um, recruitment efforts. But again, that's speculative. We don't know truly how many we will need. Okay. And that's not always for a whole year. It could be a semester. That's right. It, yeah, it could that's be right. a grading pro, you know, that's right. period. It's not always given that it's all the way across the year. So right. one might go out and one might come in. So our that's numbers right. didn't change, but we're still servicing two people. Right. right. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to make a motion that we um, send the letter, um, the in-category transfer letter, to the commissioner. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Thank we you. are on the policies. We have four policies in their final read, which are student wellness, nutrition, bullying, harassment, bias, behavior, student discipline, drug, and alcohol free. Mr. Farley, was there any comments on the policies? There were not. None. Okay. Board members may have a motion to approve these policies to be used in our school system. I make a motion that we approve the policies, student wellness, nutrition, bullying, harassment, biased behavior, student discipline, drug and alcohol free. We have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. And we've come to the second part of our citizen participation public comment. 
Is there anyone interested in speaking? Now that the meeting is over? Text. The same rules apply that I read uh, early on to the, the meeting. Excuse me, Mr. Oh, uh, sorry. We do have a 9.05, the textbook, um, student workbook. Is that? Yes. The oh, I'm sorry. Assisting. I okay. do see that now. Yes. And then we do have a second policy after that, 10.01. So it's the 9.05 textbook and student workbook, medical assisting administrative and clinical procedures with anatomy and physiology. 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 Yes, we are uh, seeking board uh, approval that uh, those materials have been out for over 30 days. We have not received any public comment. We're seeking board approval so we can put that in the hands of teachers and students. Okay. So I need a motion to um, put out there the textbook and student workbook, medical assisting administrative and clinical procedures with anatomy and physiology. I move that we approve uh, that textbook and workbook. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Okay. Well, wait a minute, I have a 10 point. Yeah. For the school improvement mm -hmm. policies. Yes. yes. Or second second read for school improvement. Yes, and we were just uh, seeking, uh, if you remember, this is one of the policies that came out of the curriculum management audit. Uh, we're just asking for it to be moved into a third read. We have not received any public comment at this time. So we want to move the um, school improvement policy in uh, for the third read then. Okay. Is it the third and final? Yeah, uh, and this final? is the second. So we'll oh, come this? back. Yes, this is the second read. So. We'll has, has it been has it has been out for public comment it has this is okay. it's it's now been out this will be the second time so we'll, it'll have to come back for the third and oh, okay. final yeah. approval oh okay okay for the second this it'll go out for the second then yeah the if, second. if you remember because the in the july board meeting between the august it wasn't quite 30 days so right. we wanted to make sure that we were following that okay. okay i make a motion that we send out the school improvement policy for the second read a second and motion. it will come back for the third and final is that correct Yes. No. I thought you just said we had to send it out for the second. No. Th this is the second, right? All right. So we're sending it out for the third and final read. Yes. Correct. All right. I make a motion that we we send out the school improvement policy for the third and final read. I second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Okay. So now we move to the citizen participation public comment. Is there anyone that would like to please come forward? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm Bob Simmons, uh, and a former commissioner here in the county and a former uh, uh, liaison, liaison to the school board. And I heard tonight uh, that the there was going to be a reactivation or perhaps activation of a commission to look at what to do about this building and plan what to do in the, uh, with this building and the alternates that might be done. And I'd like to ask that you, in the alternates, consider the possibility uh, of moving the school headquarters to the uh, soon to be abandoned courthouse. It would put the school at a very prominent place in the state. It would mean very useful, meaningful work. Uh, it is quite feasible to do because right now, with the automation, uh, the, the uh, improvement in electronic communications that we have, it takes up much less space uh, per administrative activity than it used to. Uh, and I think making making moving the school to the prominent place in the in the county would be very useful i think it'd be economically worthwhile and free up the space uh, for some of the use uh, that could help the city the, they're interested in this space uh, to be able to help develop the, uh, this end of town in here uh, it could be uh, it could hopefully lessen maintenance costs by doing this procedure uh, and there will be a natural sort of tendency to say, well, we don't own that building. We can't plan on doing it. If you make it part of the planning and show that it is 
economical or is reasonable and good for the county, the county commissioners will make it happen. They, they will work out the right swapping of properties and this, that, and the other. So I hope you will, will consider that in your considerations. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, so we've come to uh, future meetings and events. The uh, September 20th, we'll be having a board work session at 11 a.m. Um, uh, also on the 20th, the board hearing and appeal at 2 p.m. Yeah, we have it as 2.30 confirmed know, on there. I believe it's supposed to be 2 o'clock. Yeah, it's supposed to be 2 o'clock. That's what... Correct, Jackie? 2 o'clock. Okay. And then October 4th uh, through the 6th is the May Annual Conference in Ocean City. October 6th will be the Board of Education meeting. We start at 4.30. We close and reopen at 6 p.m. October 18th, we have a work session at 11 a.m. October 18th, we also have a board hearing appeal at... That's says, also 2 o'clock. Yes. And the board meeting is October 4th. Can you change that? Oh, right. yeah. Oh. Oh, that's right, because it's okay. Yeah, I'm it's sorry. A typo in the agenda. That's right. So the next board meeting will be on October 4th. Not the 6th. Right. And on October 18th, there'll be a school construction meeting. And on October 27th, the uh, Teacher of the Year Gala reservations and payments due by 10 6 17. And does anyone have anything else? So I need a motion to close the open meeting. So moved. Second. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Thank you very much.